Today is vlog day 810. For French Friday today, I thought that I would talk a little bit about one of the, it's something that I don't even know 100% how to approach myself, but it's something that I've been struggling with a little bit, and that is losing your identity to being an international whatever it is that I am. The more time you spend living abroad, and the more cultures you end up immersing yourself in, and the variety of cultures too, because I mean, things like living on the ship is just a completely weird wash of Western culture, and a mixture of other cultures in as well, but it's, it's really Western. You start to kind of lose touch with home. You start to lose touch with the culture of wherever it is you're from. For me, that would be the United States. And it's better now that the internet is so much like more pervasive and that I can get so much more information, so much more news, entertainment. I'm not completely disconnected from life at home. But even in little ways, it's pretty surprising how quickly you feel like you don't really know what's happening at home anymore. Even though I feel very, very up to date on a lot of the stuff that's going on and I try to stay very intentionally connected to the news and to everything that's going on, especially with the elections coming up, I want to make sure that I am well informed and ready to vote because it's really important that I do that even if I'm overseas. All that to say, you start to lose yourself a little bit and yeah, I just thought I'd talk about that. If you're thinking about living abroad, whether you're thinking about living in France or somewhere else, it could look and feel very different, but I think that the fundamentals are probably the same. And with that, I would like to go get some writing done. One of the first things I feel like you end up running into when you move overseas is actually figuring out how to identify yourself. Are you your nationality? Are you from the city that you're from? Do you even identify well with the city that you just lived in or that you were born in, that you grew up in, that you've worked in? How do you define yourself? Something that happens when you move within a country already, a little bit, but it adds a completely different level when you have to explain what it even means to people who don't have the same context as somebody who lives in your country. I won't pick on any states or towns in particular, but there are some places I could tell you that I was from that you'd be like, Ugh. and others I could tell you from, they'd be like, huh? And others they'd be like, oh. But then you take that to an international context, and all of a sudden, like for example, I can't say I'm from Washington State, because people will assume that I'm from Washington DC. So I have to say that I'm from Seattle, but I can't even say I'm from Seattle, which I'm not. I'm from the other side of the state entirely. But not only can I not say I'm from Seattle, I have to mispronounce it, just so they'll understand me. It lends itself towards like an immediate like identity crisis because they're like, where are you from? And you're like, Washington? No, not that one. Other side of the country. Okay, no, uh, think Seattle. Okay, no, uh, Seattle. Ah, Seattle, ah, Seattle. And then all of a sudden, they'd have an idea of where you're from, but they still have no clue. <laughs> This one found me for lunch, so now we just we're getting we're getting there's we're in Marche des Enfants Rouges, which is one of the more famous outdoor eateries in the city. We're we're going for burgers because there's a really a really good burger place here, and it just sounds delicious and like the comfort food I need right now. Still blows my mind. Truffle cheddar, highly recommend. This is so decadent. Highly recommended. Well, that was delicious. We had some really depressing calm. Never, not just not even gonna go there actually. Anywho, weather's nice at least. Huh? All right, I'm gonna take you to my favorite grocer. Um, do not touch the vegetables. Okay? Don't touch. It's a rule. Don't touch. Don't okay. touch. It's almost like Gustav's excited to see people, Spe specifically Richard people. Oh, do I get some love? 
Yes, yes. A little bit of Gustav time does the heart good. The other thing comes back to what I was talking about a little bit yesterday, today, sometime recently, which is proximity changes things. It changes relationships. It changes how you perceive the world around you, everything that's going on. And when you live abroad, you lose that proximity to so many of the things that help you to keep the, your thumb on the pulse of your own culture. Where are things going? How do people feel about different events, policies, cultural things? I remember there were movies and TV shows that came out while I was away in the past while living abroad that had changed like the vocabulary of my friends. Like there were different slang terms that I'd never heard before or never used in a particular way or context that to them they hadn't even noticed the change they thought oh no we always said this and I was like no no we we didn't I, I've never even heard this before and those kinds of things can start to make you feel like you're one or two steps removed or more from your own culture which starts to kind of uproot that sense of belonging that sense of like national or city or whatever level belonging that you used to have it's not necessarily a bad thing but it's certainly an uncomfortable thing on the flip side, you're never going to close the gap with your host nationality. So I'm never going to become French. Even if I get French citizenship down the line, I didn't grow up in the French school system. I didn't grow up watching the same TV cartoons with the same family culture, with the same traditions, with the same holidays, all of that. Like there's, there's a lot of foundational elements that are missing. Whether you're in France or in China, there's just a ton of stuff that's going to be missing. And some of those distances are going to be closer. Like my, my home culture is much more closely related to French culture than it is to, let's say, Congolese culture. But at the same time, it, it that, that gap will never quite be fully closed. So even with my French friends, I'll, I'll never be fully French. That doesn't mean that they won't welcome me. That doesn't mean that I won't be at home here, but I'll always feel that gap. I don't, I don't think that will ever fully change. So as you're getting farther away, as you're opening a gap with your home culture, you're never fully closing the gap with your host culture. Something else to think about. <laughs> But it is cool nonetheless. I think, I don't want to make this sound all negative. I th I've been feeling discombobulated lately. So I do have a little bit of a negative bent towards it. Just because I don't 100% feel like I belong anywhere, but that's normal, I think, for the human experience. I think all of us have a need to belong and have a sense that we don't quite. And hopefully some of you out there feel like you're in a wonderful spot where you belong wonderfully and everything is great. And I hope that I can get there myself. And one of the cool things about moving here, kind of like going off to college or starting a new job somewhere else, is that you do get a chance to start over, to take everything you've learned from past experiences, your past life, as it were, and apply that forward to whatever it is that you're building here and now. And your new friends, your new local spots, your new everything can basically just be rewritten into whatever it is that you want it to be. I mean, within reason, that's obviously not, it's not possible to make it absolutely whatever you want, but you do have a chance to make some really cool changes and to create something for yourself with a group of friends in a new environment, something new and unique and exciting. Like there is something special about being the foreigner, right? About being the American in the room. That, that can be a really cool thing. And it's something that I definitely cherish as well. I enjoy both. I do miss fitting in with a bunch of Americans and just the banter. I miss American banter. That's one of the things I miss most is just being in a group of Americans, joking, sharing references, and I don't know, just being sarcastic with each other and, and just everybody pitching in, even if it's a group of strangers, something that I definitely miss. But I also really enjoy going to like a birthday party with a bunch of French people and being the American in the room and just walking around talking with people and getting to know them in a completely different context, in a different language. And I don't know, being the, the stranger, being the foreigner. There's something really cool about that too. And at the end of the day, you can only carry so much with you and you can only stay the same for so long. Everything changes, we change, the things around us change, the world and the environment changes. So maybe part of that gap that's opening between myself and whatever it is that I feel like I'm missing, it might just be the past. And there's no stopping that. Like that gap is only ever widening and I'm never gonna get that back. But when I look back, I'm so much happier with where I am than where I was in the past in almost every respect. And the future only looks brighter for the vector that we're on. So with that in mind, life's pretty good. Can't really complain. I'm gonna leave it there tonight. I'm gonna go, uh, I gotta get some more work done here and then I'm gonna go have a drink with the guys who run the Peloton. We haven't sat and talked for a long time. So 
That should be really nice. And then I will see you bright and early tomorrow morning for a wonderful Friday, your Saturday, filled with more writing. I'm feeling very good. It was good to sit and talk with Richard, even though we hardly talked about uh, my book at all. My subconscious has been churning through what I need to do with Agnar's box, and I'm feeling like I'm feeling ready to sit down and tackle yet more of it tomorrow. I'll try to tell you more as we go with all of that. I know I've been talking about this book for forever, literally the entire length of the existence of my vlog, one of these days, it's gonna be available, and hopefully soon. I'll see you tomorrow.